So, we're going to review the new stand-up and little paddle board by Ascend. This is a Bass Pro and Cabela's branded item. Oh. So, a lot of people are very unsure about store branded items. So, we're going to give it a check out. This market's around $399.99. Last I checked. And that is of probably today, whenever this gets uploaded. So, we're going to pop this open. It is an entire kit. So, it's supposed to come with one paddle board, a bag, a repair kit, including the pump. And it looks like this fin is one that could be removed, but it has a little lock on it once it's in the board. Here's the repair kit. Nice orange. Looks like it would probably float, but there's no gasket in it, so I'm not too sure on that. A wrench. Oh, that's probably for deflating. And it comes with patches and glue. Let's see how many patches are substantial amount or no? Nice thick ones. Okay, so two pretty thick beefy patches. And there's definitely space in here, so if you wanted to add some of your own gear, that's, you know, safety repair kit worthy. I do think this will float, so that would be great. This is the pump. has a little gasket to put on the one side of the nozzle and it does have a PSI gauge on the end here. I'll leave that to cover on. And it has a red gasket already on there. So it does have that weird, I don't know, like two fingers going like that and then this just spins on. And it is a double action pump or single, which is really nice. Let's take the paddle out so it's out of the way. Hi, shoes are. Oh, you are so. Did you have a good time in the pond? black paddle, nothing too fancy looking. Oops, I'm sorry, did I hit you? And it breaks down into three sections and it does have measurements on here in centimeters and inches. on one end. This has a push pin. Now 
onto the board itself. There's a lot of space in this bag yet, so I can definitely see being able to put everything in here. And you got a clear pocket in the front here as well. Side carrying bag. And the back is basically a backpack with two D-rings, adjustment straps, a belly strap, and very thin padding on the back. Nothing too spectacular, but I mean, I don't think they really want you trekking this stupid far. It's definitely light enough, or I can probably pick it up with one hand. everything nicely. It's not just like jostling around in the box. Oh, and it comes with a rubber strap to wrap it up as well is also very nice and it's adjustable so you have this really nice thick rubber probably vinyl actually strap with clips at the end so when you pack it back up you roll it up like this and yeah less fighting it when you're trying to pack it back up okay. we're gonna unravel this and then go somewhere Looks like it has a gigantic piece of plastic on the face of it. So I'm gonna unroll this in the yard. Usually, the best way to store things on here is with a cooler. And I did not feel like buying another cooler. Especially when I had this one. So I'm hoping, aha, it'll be a perfect fit, just about. I'm gonna end up snipping the bungee cords and strapping it onto the corner straps here. And then we'll be good to go. And I can open the lid while I'm on there. Tons of space in here. I think it's a 32? No. 50 quarts. Or 76 cans. If you measure by that. But there's plenty of space on here for me and that. Not quite enough for you though. Okay, so here is the review segment. I have taken the board out a few times now into different locations, so the board for one is beyond perfect for getting on the water with minimal space. One of the reasons why I even bought this is because I do not own a truck or trailer, so anything non-inflatable has to go on the roof of my Jeep. This isn't as much of an issue for lightweight kayaks, but it's still a hassle to manhandle them up there and tie them down proper, not to mention how expensive proper kayak or canoe carrier car carriers are. I mean, it is something that you can throw into the back seat of a Yaris, so combined with the fact that everything fits into a backpack perfectly, you just can't beat it for the maneuverability. It is a taste heavy when you're carrying it on your back, but you can still go a good distance with it until you get overly tired. The other side of that, however, is that you need to blow it up, though I'd say this is a minor setback. It takes me roughly 17 to 20 minutes to get it up to 15 PSI, which isn't too bad, but it does wear out your arms quickly. This is, of course, could be easily solved by purchasing an electric pump. They range in price, but the cheapest I found was around $60 with chargeable mobile pumps going over $100. I believe I've seen a few for $150, $160. The pump it does come with is pretty darn nice, however. Usually things like this come with terrible pumps that leak, but I've had no issues with this one at all. 
stability wise it is excellent i have stood up on it and didn't fall in but was certainly shaky definitely gives you a good calf workout i noticed that you need to paddle very slowly and smoothly or else you almost pull yourself off of it i'm a very aggressive paddler so it didn't go too well for me I definitely prefer sitting down, which makes it near impossible to fall off. I did try to tip it over, and you will slide off before you fall off. You really need to try to get it to tip. I was leaning my full weight over with my hand on the other side, trying to pull it over, and it just did not go. When you're sitting, since there is no seat, it does tend to get uncomfortable after an hour or so. The board almost feels like a solid one when it's properly inflated, so that being said, your butt tends to go numb after a while, and no backrest means sore back as well. After maybe two hours, you're really not wanting to sit on it anymore. I have a boat seat that I'm going to just sit on top of it, but you can also get a kayak seat to sit on top if you prefer to sit like I do. They range right around 30 to $50. Space-wise, I have yet to have any issue. My cooler fits perfectly on the nose, and I have plenty of space behind me for milk crates, buckets, or anything else I would want to bring with. That being said, I wish they had more D-rings on it. It only has the four up front and only one on the very back end on the side, so it's not really usable for anything if you're not trailing it behind you. You can get stick-on D-rings from Amazon for under $20 to amend this, but I just think it would be a lot nicer if they just had four more already on it in the back. It's just unutilized space, really. All in all, I think this is an excellent package, especially for the price point. The only thing I wish it came with in terms of gear is a paddle leash. But besides that, I can definitely recommend this for new paddle boarders or anyone who wants an easy and cheap way to get on the water. I actually ended up taking this with me up to New York on a little family trip here, which is what the video in the background is behind this. Uh, and what I ended up doing, and was very effective surprisingly, was jig off of the side. Now I only have an ultralight ugly stick rod, which I really love for trout and smaller fish, uh, but for certain things it's just not great. Anyway, using just trout magnet jigging off the side, and I was catching perch pretty effectively, even in like, I think around eight feet of water is where it was the most effective, uh, but I was able to easily coast. It tracks in the water amazingly, even with waves. So there's also that. I, I just found it to be very effective for fishing, surprisingly. Even though most people do not fish off of them. The only other person I know of that fishes off one of these is a YouTuber by the name of Fisher Yin, I believe. And he has a paddleboard s uh, series on there. So definitely check him out. Look at me calling out a bigger channel. Anyway, uh, so definitely check it out for sure. Bye.